Hello, Year 7 and Year 8. This week you're being asked to make a time plan. This will be an assessed piece of work. Now I'm not asking you to make scones this week. You'll make the scones in the next lesson, which will be after half term for most of you. But I want you to make a time plan. Now a time plan is a personalised recipe. It says what you are going to do. Your time plan will look different to your friend's time plan because you are going to add different flavourings to your savoury scones. So, the first thing I'd like you to do is to have a little look at the document that you've got, which is the time plan. Now, I've had to upload two different assignment sheets. One is for those of you that are able to use a Word document and will be typing into your time plan. And the second is a PDF document for those of you that will be printing off the assignment and handwriting it. Either is fine, but please make sure that you get the right one for you because you can't type into a PDF document and um, so that would be difficult for you. So, time plans. You're going to start off by thinking what would be your ingredients for savoury scones. I've got a list here and I'm going to put this onto the table for you to have a little look at the ingredients. And you might want to zoom in on this now and you might want to um, pause the video and write some of these ingredients onto your ingredients list. Now the first three ingredients, the 150 grams of self-raising flour, the 50 grams of butter or it could be hard margarine and the five tablespoons of milk, everybody will need those. However, you can choose one or two flavourings to add and these are some ideas of what you could add. You could add 50 grams of grated cheese, cheese and mustard go well so you could add half a teaspoon of mustard, it brings out and enhances the flavour of the cheese. You could do cheese and onion by either chopping a spring onion or half of an onion. You could add some tomatoes, some sun-dried tomatoes that you chop up. 25 grams of those would be nice and you could do cheese and tomato or onion and tomato. If you want to, you could add in two rashers of cooked bacon. It must be cooked, it won't be in the oven long enough for your bacon to be cooked. So you need to cook the bacon first and that needs to be chopped. Or it might be you want to add some pepperoni. You could add a few slices of pepperoni that you slice up into little pieces. Or it might be you want to use 50 grams of a red pepper or any coloured pepper chopped up. Or it might be you want to have a few olives that you chop up. You need to choose one or two of these ingredients and write those into your time plan along with the three ingredients that you have to have for your scones. Now the next box that you've got on your time plan is equipment. I've got lots of equipment out today and I'm going to show you a few bits of it and I suggest that as yeah, you see me using pieces of equipment you can write them in, pause the video and write them in. So you're going to need a large mixing bowl, you're going to need a smaller mixing bowl or some sort of bowl and some weighing scales so that you can weigh each of your ingredients to go into the bowl. You're going to, if you're using cheese, you're going to need a grater and a chopping board to grate on. Now, if we were at school, we would have the correct colour chopping boards and to grate bakery, uh, sorry, to grate cheese, which is dairy, or if we were using bakery, we'd use a white board, but I haven't got that here. You might also need a sharp knife so that you can cut your cheese to the right size. You are going to need a knife in a minute to bring your mix together, a tablespoon to measure your milk, and a measuring jug for measuring your milk in and a pastry brush to brush over the top of your scones to glaze them. You might need a spoon for measuring when you're measuring your flour. You might need a tablespoon. And I've also got a teaspoon because I'm going to do marmite here. So you might need a teaspoon if you're going to use a wet ingredient like marmite. The final things I've got are a baking tray. And I've got a cutter so that I can cut out my scones. You might want to pause the video and just have a look at some of the equipment I've got out here. And you might want to very quickly make a list of the equipment that you're going to need and write that into your scones. I'm bound to have forgotten something, so as you see me get something out in a little while, you can add that into your time plan too. Right. You should now have completed your ingredients box, you should now have completed your equipment box for scones. So I'm going to now show you the method to make scones. 
And we're going to start off with the first box, which I've already told you what's going into the first box. You know this already. I've washed my hands before I started. I've also um, tied my hair up if I needed to. I've put an apron on. And the last job that I need to do is to spray my surfaces down. Again, like I've said to you in previous weeks, please use whatever spray or however your parents would like you to clean your surfaces. You will be patting out these scones onto your surfaces so they must be clean. Now the next stage that you might want to write in the next box of your time plan is to preheat your oven. Your oven temperature, and I'll put this again so that you can pause the video and have a look at it, your oven temperature is 200 degrees if it's a fan oven. If it's an electric oven without the fan, it's 220 degrees, or it's a gas mark 6. You've also got there the instructions for cooking, which you won't need to put in your time plan until much later, but you're going to cook these for 12 to 15 minutes, or until they're golden and well risen. Now, as we go through this demonstration, I'm going to be telling you little hints and tips. And the things that keep you or your food safe are health and safety points. These might be things like using the oven gloves when you go into the oven. It might be telling me that when I grate my cheese, I should be using a white chopping board. Or when I'm grating, uh, when I'm chopping up vegetables, I should be using a green or brown chopping board if I was at school. So special points, the little hints and tips I give you, you're going to pop in the health and safety column. So I've done my first box, which is to uh, prepare my surfaces. I've also preheated my oven. Your health and safety point there would be to tell me what temperature your oven is going on. The next stage then is to get your baking tray and you're going to put a little bit of oil on the baking tray. If you've got the spray oil, then you absolutely can use just a little bit of spray oil. I don't have spray oil today, I've got this one. So I'm just going to use a piece of kitchen roll to spread the oil around. This is not like a swimming pool. I don't want you to have an accident and put loads of oil down. It's just enough so that the scones hopefully won't stick to the tray. That would be the next stage of your method, to grease your tray. We're then going to move on to doing some weighing. So this would be a new box for our method. I'm going to take my scales I'm going to take my small bowl and place them on top of the scales and switch the scales on. A health and safety point might be telling me what I expect to be on these scales at this point, which is 0G. Now, I need 150 grams of self-raising flour, so I'm going to carefully weigh, these, weigh the flour. If you don't have self-raising flour at home, it is absolutely fine for you to use 150 grams of plain flour and then half a teaspoon of baking powder. That will make um, self-raising flour. What you're going to do is to get your butter and you're going to weigh your butter into the small mixing bowl. I already weighed my butter because you've seen me weigh one ingredient, you'll see me, uh, so you'll know how to weigh your butter because you will have seen how to do it correctly and watch previous videos on this. I'm then going to take a knife that I would use to butter my bread. It is not a sharp knife, it is the knife I would use for buttering toast. I'm going to roll the, the butter in the flour and cover it. And then I'm going to cut the butter into sticks. And each time I make a cut, I dip the butter in the flour so that all edges of the butter is coated in flour. I'm then going to cut these little sticks of butter into small cubes. Now I'm quite quick when I do this, because what I don't want to happen is I don't want to melt the butter. So you need to make sure your butter is in the fridge till just before you're about to use it for this recipe. If you keep your butter out the fridge or your hard margarine out the fridge, put it in the fridge for about half an hour beforehand to make it a little bit firmer to work with. So that all each of those sticks now is in little cubes. And then at this point, I think there's one more stick in there, I think that might be it now. I'm going to put my knife down 
and go in with my fingers and I'm going to do the rubbing in method. The rubbing in method is me rubbing the butter over the top of my finger with my thumb whilst incorporating flour. So I lift up flour and butter and I rub my fingers over my thumb. As I do this and drop the pieces of butter and flour, the butter slowly breaks down and we're looking for the butter to end up being like breadcrumbs in texture. Now I'm not picking up the same bits of flour over and over again. I'm trying to pick up different bits of butter because I don't want the butter to melt. If the butter melts, it will become quite tough and overworked and we don't want tough scones. So we're doing the rubbing in method. Now when I think I might have got all of my butter rubbed in, I want to check to make sure there are no large lumps of butter left. To do this, I'm going to need to shake the bowl and any large lumps that are left in the bowl of butter, any large lumps of butter that are left in the bowl will rise up to the top. I can still see a few large lumps now though. Now it's easy to overwork this, particularly now at this time of the year when it's getting a bit warmer. So if you notice that your flour is starting to turn yellowy orange, you need to stop because it comes to a point where you actually start melting your butter and it sticks together. And it's not a case of you rubbing in, it's that you're then melting it. So keep an eye on your butter as you go. We don't want this to be melted lumps of butter, we want this to be into breadcrumbs. So I think that's pretty much this done. So a special point here would be telling me how I check for lumps. And that is to shake the bowl. Any large lumps of butter then come to the surface, as you can see, and then you can just work on those few odd lumps. That would be one box. <coughs> So, we've made our breadcrumbs and we've shaken the bowl, any large lumps come to the surface. The next stage for you is to get your flavourings prepared. Now, this is where you're going to be a little confused, but bear with me. All of the flavourings that were on the list I showed you at the start are dry flavourings, with one exception, and that is Marmite. Now, you might say, yeah, but sun-dried tomatoes, they're wet and they are a bit wet and I agree with that but if I was to put sun-dried tomatoes in here and stir the sun-dried tomatoes would um, be mixed throughout the, the breadcrumb mixture however, if I put Marmite straight into this mixture it would stick and form a lump of Marmite and it wouldn't spread throughout the mixture so for the purposes of the next little bit you're going to prepare all of your flavourings and all of your flavourings, I'm going to call them dry ingredients. And if you're using Marmite, it is the one wet ingredient. So, the next stage then is to uh, weigh your cheese, which I've just done before you watch this video. And you're going to grate safely. A health and safety point might be to tell me how I grate safely. And the fact that I need to watch my fingers carefully so that I don't grate them because that would be very bad, it would hurt. So I'm being very careful to grate my cheese. And then you're going to add all of the flavourings, the one or two you're choosing, that are dry, in with your breadcrumbs. So I'm going to put in there my cheese. And that goes in with the breadcrumb mix. And I give it a stir with the knife I use to butter my bread. If you've got onions, you would add them here. If you're using some cooked bacon, you would add that here as well. But by giving them a stir, they are dry ingredients because they mix throughout the breadcrumbs. Next at the stage then, is to get yourself your measuring jug and your tablespoon and your milk. Tablespoons hold 15 millilitres of liquid. So you need five tablespoons or the equivalent is 75 ml. I'm aware, however, that most of our measuring jugs don't go down as far as 75 ml, which is why I've told you how many tablespoons. So one, two, three. 
three, four, to add a little bit more milk later and that's okay but I'm going to stick with five to start with. Now the only wet ingredient you might use is your Marmite. Now your Marmite needs to not be kept in the fridge for this to work particularly well. Marmite doesn't like going into milk very well but you add your Marmite into your milk and you stir it as best you can. Now Marmite hits milk and it goes into little lumps or stays in quite big lumps but it will be a little bit more liquidy than if we added it directly to the flour. So stir it as best you are able and I am aware that there will still be some lumps of Marmite here. I'm just going to get some of that Marmite off there because I quite like Marmite and cheese and Marmite scones will be nice. So you can see my milk has gone brown in colour, your milk would be white at this stage. And we then start to add our milk gradually into the dry mixture. Now a lot of scone recipes ask you to add salt, we're not adding salt because we've added cheese here. If you weren't adding cheese you might want to just add a pinch of salt. I'm going to start by adding two thirds of the milk mixture into the dry mix and then stir with the knife that I use to butter my bread. And this should start to form some little lumps. Now obviously my milk is brown, so my mixture will be darker than yours at this stage, and also when it comes out of the oven. So there's some little lumps forming now. So I need to add some more milk, so again, adding it gradually, oh, I've got a bit of Marmite, let's get that incorporated. I'm gonna add about another tablespoon of milk, and stir again. And this time the lumps get just a little bit bigger. Now you may not need all of your milk and if you've measured accurately you will need most of it but this is where you don't just add the whole lot, you, you do a little bit at a time to see to get to the right um, volume of milk to add. So I add a little bit more, I've still got a little bit of milk left and stir it, trying to get in the middle of this because for some reason the milk seems to go into the middle of the mixture and now I've got some really nice large lumps forming of the mix. Now if I added the rest of this milk it would be too much and I'd have a sticky mixture that I couldn't pat out. That might be a health and safety point for you to tell me at which point you stop adding milk or that you add it gradually. Once you've got these lumps forming you go in with your hand and you bring lightly the mixture together and you place it on your clean surface which we sprayed down earlier. Now we're not kneading this, this is not bread dough, but I am just very lightly going to bring this together so that it forms a ball that doesn't crack and fall apart. If your scone mixture, when you try and just press it down, falls apart, you've not got enough milk, you need to put it back into the bowl, add a little bit more of the milk and stir it. So this has now come together, it's a nice um, ball of scone mix. I'm not going to use a rolling pin because if we use a rolling pin the temptation is to roll these really thin. We're going to pat these out. We need them to be about three centimetres tall. So just using the fi my fingers I'm just going to press those down and I'm going to try and have a look and make sure that it's the same thickness all over. Sometimes I've seen students do this as they're patting down and one side is much lower than the other. If we were to cut these scones out like that, you would find that this scone here would be very thin and more like a biscuit and would cook very quickly. With scones we want them to be well risen. If you're not sure what a scone looks like, then perhaps have a little look on um, Google them and have a little look. So, I'm going to use my knuckles here as a bit of a guideline for what two to three centimetres might look like and I'm just aiming above my knuckle but you probably have got smaller fingers than me so you might need to have a little measure before you do this and see where two or three centimetres is. I'm then going to take my tray which I've greased lightly with oil, I'm going to take my cutter and I'm going to use the straight edge of my cutter, I'm not using the fluted edge, and I'm going to cut these out. As I press down with the cutter, I'm not twisting the cutter, 
because as you twist the cutter you stop the self-raising flower helping your scones to rise because you're forming like a crust on the side and it, it won't allow your scones to rise as well. So try and just press down and put these onto the tray. Now your aim for these two will be a similar height which is important in a minute when I'm going to re-roll or re-adjust re the mixture. So there's as many as I can make from that. I bring the mixture together carefully and lightly with my hand. Pat it down again. Now I know that I've gone for a very small cutter here. If you go for a larger cutter you will get bigger scones but they will take longer to cook and you'll get less of them out of this mixture. So again I'm going to measure I think it needs to be just a little bit thinner and try and get two more scones out here if I can. So there's one. That one's not quite I'm going to make that just work. There we are. Two. And then you'll get left with a conundrum. Some people will have enough here to make one more scone and it will be just perfect. They're so lucky when that happens. But for people like me, you might find you've got a little bit left that actually is much, much smaller than the other scones. What you can do, because things when they go into the oven cook from the outside in, is if you make this the same height as the other scones, that can go on there like that, and it goes in the middle of the tray. Now something I've forgotten to do is I forgot to save a little bit of my cheese. If you want to save a little bit of your cheese, you can, and you can sprinkle that on in a minute. However, I'm now going to take a pastry brush. If you've got one at home, that's great. If not, maybe you could use something like a little piece of kitchen roll just to help you spread the milk on. Take any remaining milk, and if you haven't got any remaining milk, just a teaspoon of milk goes into your measuring jug, and you glaze these over the top. My milk is brown because it's got the Marmite in. Yours obviously won't, so your scones won't look as dark as this unless you're using Marmite. And I just brush the milk lightly over the top of these scones. I'm trying to be really careful not to get the milk to dribble down the sides of the scones because milk's got a sugar in it called lactose. And lactose sugar, when it goes into the oven, will, if it dribbles down the side, it will stick the scones together. And what we're looking for the scones to do in the oven is we're looking for them to rise because the baking powder that's in your self-raising flour naturally will be producing bubbles of CO2 and be making your scones rise. So your scones then, at this stage, if you'd left a little bit of cheese left, um, left over, and you can write this into your time plan so you don't forget to do this when you make these after half term, you sprinkle the remainder of your cheese on top of your scones, being careful not to get it all over the tray. Next stage of your recipe then is to get these in the oven. So they're going to need to be put in the oven and part of your time plan now is to tell me your health and safety measures to get these into the oven safely. So the first thing I do is to get oven gloves and you obviously can ask a parent or carer to put these in the oven for you but I want you in your time plan to tell me the safety measures that we observe. I'm going to be holding on to them I would ask somebody else to open the oven door. In fact, I'll do that with my oven gloves on. And then remember, I count to three to allow some of that hot air to escape before placing them in. Now, right at the start of this video, I told you that these would take about 12 to 15 minutes to cook. This depends on your oven. It also depends on how big you made your scones, whether you made small scones or larger. It depends how thick you made your scones. If you made them quite thin, they will cook much quicker. So you need to put your timer on for about eight to 12 minutes. And whilst you're waiting for your scones to cook, and this needs to go on your time plan as another part of your method, you need to be washing up. Remember, we need hot soapy water that removes bacteria. We need to then dry up thoroughly to make sure that our equipment won't get put away wet and we need to make sure we get it checked by maybe our parent or carer before it gets put away. By the time you've done your washing up then, we'll be ready to then take these scones out of the oven, which will be your final stage. I'll rejoin you when these scones are cooked so you can see what they look like and uh, hopefully we'll be able to then see the last stage of your time plan. 
Thank you. So, my timer has just gone off from my oven. Before I get my scones out of the oven, I need to have a cooling rack, rack or a heat proof mat ready to put the hot baking tray on. Now, I'm going to go and have a look at these in the oven and I did have a little peep and they are done. So you need to tell me how you're going to take these out of the oven. I'm also going to give you some health and safety points that tell you some of the ways that you will know if this is cooked or not. Because in 12 to 15 minutes your scones might be cooked, but they might not be. Now bear in mind that my scones have got marmite on the top which makes them a darker brown than yours will come out. So I'm opening the oven door. I count to three before I carefully go in and take these out. Now obviously if you've got an oven door, they go onto the cooling rack. If you've got an oven door that opens sideways, you will need to ask somebody to hold that door open for you and that is a health and safety point. So, how do you know when your scones are cooked? Now the tray will be very hot so I don't need to be handling it, but if you do need to handle it you will need your oven gloves on. Health and safety point. The scones are well risen compared to what they were. I'm not going to touch them, I'm just going to point to them. They are also uh, a nice golden brown colour on top. Mine look very dark brown because of the marmite. Yours will look a lot lighter than this, but they will still be a golden colour compared to when they went in the oven. You can see that they've risen really beautifully, which is what we were looking for here. They've gone really nice and tall and they should be tall enough so that when they are cool later you'll be able to take the scone and break it open without having to cut it open. This then is your scones. If you've done your washing, you're drying up and you've sprayed your surfaces down, then once you've got your scones out of the oven and told me the health and safety points and how you know when they're cooked, then your time plan is done. You then need to get that submitted for me onto Teams. Now there's one more thing that you need to add to your time plans and I think it's fairly self-explanatory but you need to tell me how long each stage of the method takes. So I've given you an example um, on the washing your hands, spraying your surfaces, putting your apron on, tying your hair back and I've said three minutes. You need to go through and for each step of your method you need to estimate how long you think it will take. Now, I'm going to turn my oven off because I've just realised I've left my oven on. We don't want to do that. And please remember, you aren't making savoury scones this week unless you particularly want to. You are going to be make, making them in lessons if you can get the ingredients for them in our next food lesson. So don't worry about making them this week, but because for most of you it will be half term next week, then maybe it gives you, your parents or carers a couple of weeks to see if when they go shopping if they can get hold of either some plain or some self-raising flour for you. There you go. Hopefully now you should be set to do your time plan and your assignment this week um, for scones. Thank you.